in organic chemistry, we have two major categories of isomerism, and these are structural isomerism and stereoisomerism. The formula you can see here on screen of C4H7Br can be drawn with structures that represent every single type of structural and stereoisomerism that you encounter on the entire OCRA A-level in chemistry specification. It's actually quite surprising because it's a relatively simple formula, but in this tutorial I'll show you exactly how it can have 12 different structural isomers, how three of these then have EZ and cis-trans stereoisomerism, and then finally how two of the original structural isomers can also have optical isomers. Now, that's a type of stereoisomerism you would actually encounter in the second year of your A-level. Please check the video description for timestamps and updates. Now, before I scroll down and reveal the 12 different structural isomers of C4H7Br, I recommend you have a go. So have a go at trying to identify, so that's drawing and naming the structures that you can get for C4H7Br, and there are 12 of them. I recommend drawing out the longest continuous carbon chain, putting a double bond on that chain, because that's what the formula is suggesting when you start looking at the number of hydrogens compared to carbons. And I'd also then position that bromine at different points along the chain, maybe move the double bond up, see if you can introduce some branching, you can. And also remember that the structural isomer of an alkene is a cyclic alkane. And then maybe come back to the video once you've done that, done all that you can, to see what the correct answers are. But spoiler alert, I'm going to scroll down now and reveal the different structural isomers. So let's take a look. We can see here that in the top row, we've got the longest continuous chain is of four carbon atoms. So I've got the butonine original chain being used all the way through here for all of these. But then what I've done, if you look at the position of the bromine, is I've quite literally just moved it down the chain to different positions. We can't normally do that. If you've done in a lesson, perhaps, an example of a structure like, I don't know, one bromobutane, well, you can only really do that to get one bromobutane and two bromobutane. Because as soon as you try and do three bromobutane, your teacher should tell you that that isn't possible because what you've drawn by doing three bromobutane is just two bromobutane but flipped over. Now, by having the molecule unsymmetrical, by having this double bond group over here at the start of the chain, we can actually move the bromine through and end up with four different structural isomers. So looking at that chain symmetry has been very useful here. Then what I did for five and six was I took the structure from one and I just moved the double bond up to between carbons two and three. Now, I'm not going to do that again, putting it between carbons three and four, because I'm just going to end up with structure one, but flipped over. But by moving it up to between carbons two and three, I am able to create a different structural isomer. And then by moving the bromine up again from that, I can create a sixth structural isomer. Then finally, the bottom row here, these are, as you can see over here in the bullet points, these are branched. All the structures currently on screen are aliphatic. They are all unsaturated as well because they've got at least one carbon-carbon double bond. But only the bottom row could be described as branched. And what I did here was take the original structure and then introduced, instead of that fourth carbon in the longest continuous chain, a branch at carbon number two, and then I moved the bromine around. Be careful when you're looking at all your different structures that you haven't just drawn one of the others but flipped over, and that you haven't created five bonds to a carbon atom. For all the names of these different structural isomers, check the video description. If you go there right now, you'll find that some of them have got extra bits of notation in their name, and that's related to the stereoisomerism that I'm going to be talking about shortly. But have a check with yours, have a look, have all of those laid out next to the structures. They're going to be uh, named by the numbers you can see in the purple. 
What about the alicyclics then? Right, so you've had a look at the names of the unsaturated, you've had a look at the extra notation maybe in there, and maybe even had a look ahead to see where that EZ is coming from. But I just want to pause for a moment on these alicyclics. Now, these cyclic alkanes are correct and valid structural isomers of the alkene, but we can't put the double bond in here because otherwise we haven't got the right number of hydrogens. Trust me, it does work, but if you're still unsure, draw out the display formula for these and you'll see they all have the same molecular formula. Now here what I did initially was bromocyclobutane for instance. I then shortened the alicyclic section so I made it cycloprope instead of cyclobut just here, introduced a branch, moved the branch around and then this final one number 12. I wouldn't expect you to name that as part of A-level chemistry but I have put the name of it in the video description. But these are the grand 12, and we've got different descriptors for them, so you know how they could set the scene in the exam. They could ask for you perhaps just to draw the alicyclic structures that match the formula, or they could ask you to draw just three unsaturated suggestions. You've got to make sure you can interpret the demand of the question. It is almost, um, it is also, sorry, worth noting that here I've described these structures as alicyclic. You could also still describe them as aliphatic because all the alicyclics are also aliphatic as long as there's no aromatic rings on them, but we can't describe these aliphatic structures as the alicyclics. Moving on to part two of this, which is the stereoisomerism. Now, this is going to be EZ and cis-trans, and you encounter this when you're uh, introduced to the alkenes topic in the first year of A-level chemistry. And this first example that I'm going to use is using molecule number one from the list. So if you go right back to the list up here, we're looking at this structure, number one. This has stereoisomerism. So let's take a look at the stereoisomerism here for both EZ and cis-trans. What we need to do is draw out the molecule, like as you can see here, first off. So I'm showing that trigonal planar shape around each of the carbon atoms in the double bond, that 120 degree bond angle, and that's expected to demonstrate this EZ and cis-trans stereoisomerism. Then what I need to do is go to each carbon in the double bond, one at a time, and identify the high priority group that's bonded to that carbon atom and then I do the same for the other. You must make sure you do them one at a time, otherwise this won't work. So, first off, I'm gonna look at the left-hand carbon just here in the double bond. Now, I can say that this molecule is going to have EZ and cis-trans stereoisomerism for different reasons, but my first little sort of check on the criteria has already been done, and that would be to make sure that each carbon in the double bond is bonded to two different atoms or groups. And I can see I've got two different groups here, and just a little preview of the right, I can see I've got two different groups there as well. Back to the EZ. What I then do is, for the immediate atoms, which is just the bromine and the hydrogen here on the left, I'm going to label them with their atomic numbers. And you can see I've done that here with the purple. Now, whichever of those two atomic numbers is greater deems that group, or that atom in this case, as high priority. And so here, my high priority group, highlighted in the purple, is the bromine on the left-hand carbon in this double bond. What about the right-hand carbon? What about this one then? Well, the immediate atoms connected to that carbon are hydrogen and carbon. Now, that's one and six in atomic numbers, respectively. I'm not considering this whole chain over here because I don't need to because these two are different from each other. But if they were two carbons, for instance, then I would look at the rest of the chain as well. And you keep going until you find a difference. The difference here between these two has identified that this carbon atom here is going to be the high priority group because six is greater than one and because the bromine and the carbon are positioned above and below, so we consider those the two different sides here, because they are across from each other, they're on different sides, this is the E stereoisomer. We can then look at the structure I've drawn underneath, which is the stereoisomer of this molecule, still structural isomer number one from the original list. But we can see here, we've now got the groups on the right-hand side were arranged differently when the bond was formed. 
So these are stereoisomers of each other because they've got the same structural formula, but the atoms were arranged differently in the space provided. And here we can see that these two groups being the other way around, we've got the six at the top and the one at the bottom with the atomic numbers. So my two high priority groups are on the same side. That's the top side here, but it could have been the bottom side, making this the Z stereoisomer. What about cis-trans? Because we can see those labels here as well. Well, we know that in order to have EZ, we need that each carbon in the double bond needs to be bonded to two different atoms or groups. We've already talked about that. But for cis-trans, we need each carbon in the double bond to be bonded to two different atoms or groups, but each carbon must also be bonded to an example of the same substituent group. That's quite a mouthful. I'll put a full description that's example word worthy in the video description for you there. So that's the criteria to meet cis-trans stereoisomerism. I'll demonstrate it though, because that's easier to see perhaps. In this carbon-carbon double bond, we've already said each carbon is bonded to two different atoms or groups each side. But we can also see that each carbon is bonded to two of the same substituent group, and that's an hydrogen each. Now the position of these two same groups, these two hydrogens here, above and below, denotes this structure as a trans stereoisomer. They are across from each other, like transatlantic. Now, if we look at the structure at the bottom, just here, we can see that the two hydrogens have been shown on the same side. So this is cis. There's a special criteria for the cis trans. Check the video description for your exam board wording. Another example, using molecule number six from the original list, we can see here that we've got our carbon-carbon double bond, and I've drawn out the molecule again from the original list, so have a look at yours, see how I've drawn it out compared to that. And what I'm going to do is look at each carbon in the double bond, one at a time, and consider its high priority group. For the left-hand carbon, I can see I've got bromine and carbon, and bromine is higher priority because of that larger atomic number. On the right-hand side, I've got carbon and I've got hydrogen. And so on the right-hand side here, I can say that the carbon is the high priority group. They're both on the same side, either both the top or both the bottom. And so that makes this the Z stereoisomer. Now this structure, different from last time, because if you have a look last time, the Z stereoisomer was also labeled cis. This one has been labeled trans. And the reason is each carbon in the double bond is bonded to a CH3. And these two CH3s, being the same as each other, are then positioned above and below. And because they are on opposite sides, unlike the high priority groups, this molecule is labeled Z and it's labeled trans. Now, we don't typically use cis trans in the naming, but we are going to use the EZ in the naming, and you'll recognize that in the video description names. Look at the structure underneath. The high priority groups are now above and below. So that makes it the E stereoisomer. And the two CH3s, which are the same as each other, are on the same side. So this is cis. Just a little bit of a summary of what we can see here. Molecules 1, 5, and 6 from the original list, so I've not mentioned one of those, have EZ and cis trans stereoisomerism. The IUPAC name for molecules 1, 5, and 6 should reflect their EZ stereoisomer. So, for example, molecule 1, drawn this way at the bottom just there, should actually be named as Z1-bromobut-1-ene. So, watch out for that in exams. If your molecule has EZ stereoisomers, you should include that letter in the name if you're presented with a full formula. Moving on then to part three, which is optical isomerism. Now, this is from the second year in the course. This is quite tricky to spot, but it's another example of stereoisomerism. Now, for this to take place, I'm using one of the molecules here. So this is actually molecule number three from the original list. So if I go back to the original list, go right back to all of this, this is the molecule I'm referring to. And the reason I selected this molecule is because it meets a certain criteria of having what we call a chiral center. Now, this has been drawn in skeletal, so it's not obvious to see it. But that carbon just here is actually bonded to four different atoms or groups. And what that means is it can have a non-superimposable mirror image. And I've drawn that just here. Notice that to represent this, 
I've shown the chiral center carbon, often called a chiral carbon, as tetrahedral. Now, the rest of it up here, I didn't need to draw out in full, but I have done because I think it's important for you to see the full structure. But this carbon definitely needed showing in tetrahedral. Now, this chiral center just here, so it's got four different atoms or groups bonded to it. This group is different from this CH3. This bromine is different from that CH3. They're all different. If I position them around tetrahedral and then draw a non-superimposable mirror image of the molecule across a mirror line, this is an optical isomer of the original structure. They're referred to as enantiomers outside of A-level, but here you can just describe them as optical isomers of each other. And this is an example of stereoisomerism. They sometimes catch you out in the multiple choice of the OCRA exams because they'll give you an alkene and they'll say to you, how many stereoisomers does it have? And actually hidden in the molecule, there will be a chiral center. Of course, that's only going to be on the second year papers, but just keep an eye out for that because this is a type of stereoisomerism. Just a final note on this, molecules 3 and 10 actually have a chiral center from the original list. So have a look at molecule 10 and see if you can draw it out this way as well to demonstrate this optical isomerism. If you would like more videos about chiral centers on allocyclic structures or just a bit more detail about optical isomerism in general, there'll be links at the end of this tutorial and in the video description and also at the top of the screen if you click the little I. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I would really appreciate it if you found this video helpful, that you give it a quick like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. And until next time, happy revising.